vacuum sealed. <laughs> so, a lot of people have some very strong opinions these days. And uh, I have some strong opinions too. And my strong opinion I'd like to share with you today is that there's few things better in this world than a piping hot cup of coffee on a really cold mountaintop. <laughs> that's, my, that's my opinion of the day. Uh, so, oh, and in a Man vs. History mug, no less. Don't forget about that. Uh, if you haven't checked out the Outfitter Shop, definitely go by and uh, give it a look. I'm actually putting up some new, uh, I'm actually putting in some new designs um, in the next couple days too. So uh, you'll probably notice a couple new ones out there. So definitely check them out and uh, get yourself something and support the channel in the process, right? We, you guys know it's not monetized. So whatever you do to support it, I love it. Um, anyway, so I haven't been up here for about a week. We had a bunch of snow and I had to wait for that snow to thaw. And uh, I was working on that Mountain Man video. So I finally got that done. Snow's gone for the most part, still some patches. But uh, finally had an opportunity to get up here and just wanted to take the day to, to really spend it in nature and just to kind of take time to kind of explore, to check things out, uh, to slow down, have a couple cups of coffee as I kind of wander and uh, just kind of let the restorative properties of nature kind of do their thing. Um, you know, I've said a lot in other videos how important it is to try to spend time in nature. And I know, you know, not everybody has access to the same type of nature, uh, especially this nature or you know, if you live in a rural area, then uh, you probably have a bit more access. But even in an urban area, uh, I know it sounds kind of silly, but, you know, go to your park and uh, just spend 20, 30 minutes at your park. Uh, take some pictures of, like, the birds you see. Uh, take some pictures of the trees as well, uh, particularly, like, the trunks and the bark. And then go home and identify those, right? Go online and try to figure out what kind of birds are these, what kind of trees are these. And uh, start keeping track of them, right? As silly as it sounds, uh, you know, take a notebook with you and start keeping track of the uh, of the birds that you see and and you'll notice like at different times a day at different times a year you're gonna see different birds and and all this cataloging uh, this keeping track of nature uh, it's gonna make you feel more like you're a part of nature and and again I know it's easy to dismiss it and uh, so on and so forth but I I recommend it and it's a small thing you guys can do in urban areas to uh, uh, to benefit and I've done the same thing when I lived in like uh, close to downtown Denver uh, I tried to get whatever nature I could when I was in the city and uh, I hope it helps you so it's good for everybody right so go ahead and give it a go anyway so we're gonna spend the day out here just kind of exploring and checking things out uh, it's not about you know hiking for a destination or anything like that it's kind of just keeping our eyes open and seeing what we can find out here so uh, anyway come along with me we'll spend some time in nature cheers Here you can see the remnants of a rabbit that got absolutely wrecked by something out here. Um, probably a, a bobcat or a fox or maybe something bigger. Just a good reminder of the competition that ensues out here in nature when nobody's around and looking. All right, so I found some mountain lion scat, which is a little bit disturbing, but also pretty cool. Um, I'll move the camera over so you can see it. So mountain lion scat, has this whitish color, okay? You can see different pieces of it here. And that whitish color comes from it eating the fur of all these animals that it's out there killing. So if you look closely, you can see that internally, that's pretty much all fur in there. It's got a weird sort of fibrous look to it. And uh, again, that's where that comes from. So really cool finding it, but at the same time, you know, it makes you <laughs> sort of keep your head on a swivel when you're out here, because you know these things are out prowling around. So if you look closely, you'll see these a lot along game trails. So what you've got here is you've got a bear claws his way into the tree and just rips that thing straight down. And again, this is just sort of a way to mark his territory to say that this is his domain right here. All right, Madame Nazar would be very pleased <laughs> to see these. Uh, some old... Uh, alcohol bottles. Of course, you can tell by the plastic cap, they're not terribly old, but still kind of neat to find these out here uh, just in the middle of nowhere. All right, so here we've got some bear scat, and uh, this isn't too old. Uh, in the spring and the summer, this will be filled with 
berries and seeds and things like that. But later on in the year, um, this would have like animal fur and, and things that uh, bears would be eating a little bit later on in the season. Um, there's some here, there's also some over here, a little bit over here. So these are pretty fresh, um, which means that probably wasn't too long ago when it came through. All right, so this is pretty exciting. So here you've got a black bear track. You can kind of gauge size here. Uh, you can tell it's black bear track because first of all, on a black bear, the outer toe, okay, on like his right paw here, his outer toe is the biggest toe, opposed to humans, it'd be this side would be our biggest toe. So over here is the biggest toe. Also, black bears, uh, they have a very wide print. And sometimes you'll only see it where it's just like that section. You don't get this bottom half, but he's just kind of rumbling through here so he's leaving some good impressions so black bear track very very fresh all right you can see how easy it is to move this snow so uh pretty exciting all right so i found some bones just laying around out here gathered some up um there you go so i got a couple uh a couple rib bones right here and then a piece of a vertebrae and then this is a humerus right here it's pretty neat looking uh, this would have come actually all these would have come from a mule deer um, you can tell it's been a long time uh, these are pretty bleached by the sun still pretty neat looking right some of the fun things you can you can find out here I found a hole that, that found a hole that goes all the way through the rock That's it. Just kind of neat. Yeah. Come here, Excalibur. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. So what you're looking at here, this is mule deer scat right here. These elongated pellets, somewhere between half an inch to an inch long. Uh, if these were elk, they'd be a little bit bigger than this. So these are exceptionally fresh, by the way. Coffee break. Still hot though. Supposedly, this uh, area where I'm at right now is was a sacred native site. It's this huge rock sort of cliff that kind of sticks out of the mountain up here. You can't miss it. People find arrowheads up here all the time. But it's kind of surrounded by private property, so um, it's it's like a nature preserve surrounded by private property. So like it's really hard to for our outside people that kind of come in and, and explore here. But uh, it's kind of neat because we're on top of this cliff right now overlooking this big valley. And uh, you know, you we, we find, we, not me, but people find these arrowheads up here all the time. And I guess something about the stone up here is really good for arrowhead making. Um, I don't know if it's deposits of flint or obsidian or something like that, but this is right near that overlook and you can picture that over millennia, people coming up here to get stone, spending any time up here, and I'm talking like Native Americans, uh, that this sort of flat, sandy sort of area is perfect sort of place to stop and rest. And it's neat is these, this sort of rock overhang here that stretches around, I'll have to pan the camera here in a second to show you. Uh, it's got all these dark soot, uh, of fire residue all along the base of them. And one could kind of picture people coming in here uh, throughout time, taking refuge in these same rocks, making a fire and, and uh, just taking some time for themselves here um, or wait out the elements, whatever it would be. It's just kind of neat to, to know that, you know, you're, you're in the same spot that uh, these people would have been. And uh, little has changed here. Definitely much has changed in the outside world, but little has changed here. And sometimes it's just those little things of uh, stopping and, like I said, slowing down and thinking um, about how many people came before us who would have stopped and rested in the exact same spot. So I'll just pan the camera here. You can see a little bit. There you go. You can kind of get a look. So just, yeah. It's a nice little overhang. And then you can see the, you can see where it's been burned up. 
because of the smoke sort of coming up these rocks. But it's a nice little overhang here and uh, yeah, just a neat little spot. All right, so this is always fun to come across. So these are just antler rubbings, okay, where the mule deer or the elk will rub their antlers up to the tree and then you can see the bark just kind of spirals up the top and then comes right off. This isn't that old. You can see it's still got some of the sap sort of dripping down, but there is an absolute abundance of it in this area, all right? Something came through and just wrecked all of these trees, and there is a lot of markings. It makes sense. There's a uh, game trail right up here, and so if some big guy would have come through, he would have rubbed these trees, marked his territory, and then kept on moving. This is elk scat right here. So, uh, again, much larger, look very similar to uh, mule deer, but much larger in size. So just walking along and in this little patch of snow here, you can see these are elk tracks right here. Uh, you can tell they're elk tracks and not moose tracks because moose tracks are a little bit bigger and they tend to be a little bit pointier on the ends here. So over here, uh, I was able to find some pretty cool stuff. So much bigger rib bone, and then you'll see all these vertebrae here. So we've got, what, five vertebrae and a rib bone. So this isn't a mule deer. This actually is uh, the remains of, of an elk, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, obviously everything is much bigger in scale. Uh, their bones are bigger, their poop's bigger. Uh, but yeah, again, it's, uh, it's neat finding this stuff out here. Not sure if you can see this okay, um, but over here you've got the remnants of a snake skin. Either it would be a gardener snake or a, maybe a gopher snake. You see the head on there. Pretty fun to keep your eyes open and uh, find these things. Oh.